Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to all our guests. Uh, welcome to our second in our webinar series looking at the infusing of intellectual property in the curriculum. Uh, we're looking at the secondary schools today, looking at the issue of how we can uh, better engage with our teaching professionals to ensure that intellectual property is infused properly in the curriculum across our schools in Jamaica. Uh, I'm Dr. Marcus Goff, Deputy Director of Legal Counsel at the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, Jaipo, and I'm pleased to be the moderator for you this afternoon. I want to apologize for our late start and just starting on some of the technical difficulties behind the scenes and affording more time for more of our um, participants and our audience members to join. So welcome again, and um, thanks for being here with us. So uh, the topic is one that we've been looking at since January of this year uh, in the context of uh, wanting to engage in a process. Am I being heard? Yes, sir. No, I'll be able. OK. Yes, thanks. Right, we wanted to engage in a process um, of seeing how JIPO, as the agency tasked with intellectual property administration in Jamaica, could uh, work in the interest of the nation to have intellectual property being able to be understood and appreciated across the school curriculum. We all can appreciate, of course, the benefits of having an innovative society when we are persons and students, teachers, uh, are able to maximize the creativity of our nation's youth and to be able to see how that can be even uh, translated into economic activities right, for them, their families, and of course, for the nation. So since January, we had our first in this series, looking at how we could uh, kind of encourage and share examples and best practices in terms of how IP could be infused into the curriculum in the school system. And so this afternoon, we're pleased to be looking at the secondary school context um, to see how uh, our professionals who are working in the industry who have students in their classes have been able, uh, different techniques, to be able to have the students exposed to intellectual property in the classroom and to also how the students have been able to benefit from it. So we're pleased to be joined this afternoon by a um, slate of very distinguished presenters. You know, I want to commend Mr. Hope and the team at JIPO for producing the flyer. And um, I'm very pleased to be joined by a distinguished panel of ladies this afternoon, headed by our first speaker and presenter, Mrs. Vivine Johnson. Mrs. Johnson is the Senior Director on the Planning and Development Division in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. Um, Mrs. Johnson is an attorney at law of many years experience in the ministry and uh, recently participated in training looking at this issue of intellectual property in the curriculum. So we're very pleased to be joined by Mrs. Johnson here this afternoon um, and uh, I'll ask her to present first and then I'll introduce each of our, our panelists um, before they present. So uh, thanks again for joining us. I'm going to invite now Mrs. Vivine Johnson to present from the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Goff, for your welcome. And I hope that I will do justice. I So, in terms of my other presenters, co-presenters, um, good evening. So I, um, Ms. Chantal English, Manager, Copyright and Related um, Rights. Mr. Stewart, ICT instructor, Colobar High School. Ms. Janique Nesbeth, head of the Visual Arts Department of Charlemont High School. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, that is Vivian Johnson from the Ministry of Youth and Information to participate in this continuing series by the 
Jamaica Intellectual Property Office aimed at developing wider and better appreciation of intellectual property and related rights. I have been asked to speak today on innovation and intellectual property education for Jamaica. And I have been asked to look at practical approaches for inclusion. Dr. Goff mentioned that I participated in the training seminar for the IP for youth um, sometime in November last year, not last year, 2019. And also that being from the Ministry of Education from a policy side, how it is that we can have more of this being in, infused into our curriculum. I have sent just to, for us to determine what is intellectual property, commonly termed IP. Could you go on the next slide for me, please? It speaks to the creation of the minds, including inventions, literacy and artistic works, design, symbols, names and images using commerce. Um, there are many more in terms of, as we said, the trademarks, um, number of other eras, and we have them such as like copyright, patent, um, trademarks, etc. So this definition is taken from one of the slides in the notes to the training that I attended. So it gives us an idea of the errors that are covered in intellectual property. So the next question would be why the introduction of IP into the curriculum. It's interesting because the curriculum is for our young people. It's teaching young people in school in terms of ensuring that they, when they leave from the school, they are better prepared for the world higher education and the world of arts. And so they are very important customers of IT products. You go around, anywhere you see them, they have their cell phones, smartphones, they have music, their iPod, everything. And so important customers of these IP base. And um, our creators are very con concerned, very conscious of the, this population, this marketing group, the youth. And if you probably have seen, for example, ads in terms of catch up and so forth, you notice that the target is for the child, the young child, because if the young child wants it and he or she is with the mother, they would be calling for it, crying for it. And so the mother wants to ensure that he or she gets what she wants, not that they are so giving in, but you just want to ensure that the child is cared for. It is very easy for them to, um, to provide these things, to buy these things. And therefore, marketers target these, th this audience, young persons. They are not equipped with IT knowledge in many instances. And they have some misconceptions about IP. And so, for example, they would be thinking of how it is that they could take things or to use things without having any reference now or, or even any regard for the copyright holder, et cetera. And however, they have become a promising source of invention, innovation, works, and entrepreneurship. And when we think about the talent, our youth, they are very talented. If there's anything, 
anything happens, you're seeing that they turn it into music just like that. So they have this creativity. And so it is really having these intellectual property lessons infused into the curriculum to ensure that students are encouraged from the very early age to know about what intellectual property, what is it, what is it about, how they can become involved, and not only see it as foreign things, but so more as very dear to them, very concrete, so they understand what this is. I can earn from this. This is my rights. I can put a patent to it. I can put a copyright to it, depending on whatever it is. Okay, could you move on to the to the next slide for me, please? The other one, please. The policy challenges. Okay, so basically, what are you thinking of infusing into the curriculum? Um, I keep referring to using Dr. Goff opening remarks as a reference point because he spoke about having IP education infused into the curriculum. But how does this become infused into the curriculum? Who is it that we need to talk to to en ensure that this is done? And so it is entitled policy challenges because there are certain hurdles to overcome for this to be done. Not necessarily heavy hurdles that, you know, will need legal um, decisions, etc. but just to ensure that you have the appropriate um, approval or decisions, and this would make it easier. So we need to identify the right stakeholders. And these, for example, if you want it to be infused into the curriculum, there would be a ministry or ministries involved. And in this case, because it is IP for Jamaica, it is the Ministry of Education. And so the policymakers, who do we have to convince, um, encourage that this is a very important area to be there. So moving from the, so we think of the, the policymakers, the the the. In, in, in our situation, we would have like the minister, the PS, the, the senior executive management group, the education officers from the CEO, the education officers. We have um, our principals going out into the, into the field, the principals in the school, the teachers, and the publishers, among others. So how do we get it into the system? The point there says that policymakers are very busy with priorities. So what do we do? So we have to make a convincing case by showing them links, reasons why this should be done. So some justification for that. And instead, preparedness for the MOE. How do we communicate to them the importance of having of ensuring that this is infused into the curriculum so that our our young people's um creativity invent inventiveness and innovation can be spurred and maintained so those are some of the things and therefore in justification to have it into the curriculum um could you advance the next page for me please So in looking at it, we have said that based on what it is, our vision, our mission, our purpose within the ministry and within Jamaica, IP would have been, would be a very important area for infusion. And so we look at our ministry's um, vision, which says a go globally competitive and innovative education and training system, producing informed, socially conscious and empowered sitting strength. Having seen that, we can see all of that as we talk about persons, the young people being innovative, being, being, being um, passionate about what they do, to be 
creative, those, those fall within it because that is where the world is going. So when we speak about innovative education and training system, what are we thinking about? And this is embedded in, in terms of our national um, vision 2030, which is Jamaica National Development Plan, and more so that world-class education and training where our country will develop an education and training system that produces well-rounded, qualified individuals who are able to function as creative and productive individuals in all fears of our society and become competitive in a global world. So our vision, they, the two visions in a sense, they point the way for having such um, intellectual property education within the curriculum. Thank you. Next, please. And so since we speak about the curriculum, let us look at our curriculum and look at some of the characteristics of our curriculum. And that's what we do have what is termed a national standards curriculum and very recent um, curriculum too. And so it, the revision of our curriculum started in 2012 and it went on to up to 2014. And it was piloted in 2016 and was implemented on a phase basis in 2016 and become fully, fully um, implemented. And it covers grades one to nine. And the other years would be the CSEC and other external um, curriculum syllabi. Um, so our curriculum, National Standards Curriculum, it recognizes that skills and competencies in communication, collaboration, creative and critical thinking are needed for the 21st century. It outlines what students must know and be able to do at each level in each subject. And the aim of the National Standards Curriculum is to ensure that students are equipped. So each learner is equipped with meaningful tools to adapt to diverse situations and become lifelong learners who are well suited for the demands of the 21st century. And it is based on a paradigm shift from content knowledge-based education to one that is competency-based and embodies knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And so the aims we said before would be to create successful lifelong learners, confident and, produce, and productive individuals, young people who are aware of and value their Jamaican identity and citizenship. And the curriculum is engaged in, well, it's, it uses the, the five E's, engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. So each lesson that is done in the classroom, the teacher is supposed to have it embedded using the five E's. And as we said, embedded against those, those four C's. So the curriculum is very ripe. And so there are some practical approaches, since I was asked to look at some practical approaches of infusing into the curriculum. And could you go to the next slide for me, please? The next two slides. The next one, thank you very much. And some of these, go back to that one, thank you. Some of these include games, literacy pieces, innovation, artwork, music, trips, science fair, competition, clubs. And we spoke about the training put on by the WIPO. So they have what is known as an IP for kids um, curriculum and at the primary and at the secondary level, and they have a number of videos. And we, so in, this, in the schools, in the lessons, resource persons could be brought in. Um, we just celebrated national, um, well, Red Month. So we have a vast number of singers, repertoire is very large, and so many different ones that could be used as resource persons. So they could come into the school, tell the students how they started in becoming who they are now, and 
what, what interests them and so forth. Storytelling, using other modes such as role playing, demonstration. Those are just to mention a few as to how they can be infused into the curriculum. Within our curriculum, and we notice that right now, we have most of our teaching is and learning is on is done online and children have a number of opportunities and teachers to make their lessons interesting by using any of these approaches the we know so we, we spoke about the world becoming it students themselves can can become innovators and inventors as we said and develop learning kits could develop some of these resources that, that are needed for this type of education. Um, we also note that the ministry is focusing on the STEM, science, technology, um, engineering, mathematics, and we're not leaving out the A's, the arts. And so in some cases you have the STEAM and the stream and the, all of these that will take in the religion and, the, and the, the arts. And those are areas that are very lucrative that students themselves can become involved in and from very early. And so teachers could in their lesson planning can use a number of these approaches and look at, as we said, using the, the literature that's produced by the WIPO for kids, um, IP for kids, will get a number of creative ideas as to how to bring their classes alive. And so I don't want to take up much of your time, but I just look at innovation and creativity and use the, this was our, this came from Theodore Levitt, which says that creativity is thinking new things, innovation is doing new things. So there, there, there are opportunities abound for infusing IP into our curriculum. And there's not, we, we don't have to do anything new. We don't have to have any new um, syllabi or anything because we have all of the various subjects. I just mentioned this STEM and this team. I just also would, 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 would say any of those areas, social, our sciences, our, our social studies, our history, it could be embedded at any era of the curriculum, more so in those areas that I have mentioned. And so I just want to wish you all the very best. Um, we we have covered a lot of grounds in the society and as we and as as i'm saying goodbye i just bring to your mind in terms of how creative we are even the mask no two masks are the same very different and you see the expressions and you see all of those creative creativity coming through when persons producing them and my mind goes back also to in the early days of the pandemic that our students at the university that and our young engineers, they also manufactured that face shield and we were so oh about it and so forth. And also that I also remember now, which might be in use now with so many persons using the ventilators that they also develop where you have different prongs to it. So instead of one person being attached, a number of persons could be attached to a ventilator. So there is creativity. And so I, I just want to, to, just, to, to just say to you that we just need to continue the public awareness, continue our sensitization approach and making that justification for it to be embedded more fully into the, into the curriculum and so on a national basis where you can have those competitions, those um, games, you know, that students can enter and they
they can appreciate, that they can learn from it and that they can earn from them. So thank you very much and all the very best. And I look forward to, to supporting you in any way that I can in my little sphere. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Mrs. Johnson. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, I think you set the right tone for us. Um, so the policy objectives, of course, are very important. Um, and of course, how IP fits into that policy framework and then how it is actualized on the ground, you know, are very important aspects of what we, of course, want to raise awareness about. Um, the uh, various approaches and techniques that you also mentioned, of course, are quite, I think, interesting, you know, and it's really just to get uh, policymakers and teachers to think outside of the box, you know, to see how uh, they can use different styles or different tools be able to infuse IP in, in the classroom. Um, yes, the webcam, I don't know why it's not working. The webcam must be not too agreeable on the camera. My apologies. Um, so yes, uh, probably I'll try to fix that. I'm not sure why it's not coming through, but um, I hope you can hear me clearly. I want to thank Mrs. Johnson again, uh, Senior Director in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, um, responsible for policy. And so we're very pleased to hear that, of course, the Ministry appreciates the IP and the role it plays in national development. And of course, starting from uh, the early school years. Okay, um, so next, I would like to introduce our next speaker, uh, who is Mrs. Michelle Stewart Elliston. Um, Mrs. Stewart Elliston is an ICT instructor from Calabar High School, uh, where she teaches digital media, animation and game design, and electronic document and preparation management. Uh, she's been teaching copyright and intellectual property. Uh, since 2013, uh, she teaches it primarily in the digital media and animation and game design courses. So we're very pleased to have Sister Ellison to be able to share with us as someone who has been doing this for quite some time, since 2013. Um, in terms of just, you know, the types of, again, approaches and techniques that have been used, which she has found, you know, to be uh, fruitful or to which the students are receptive and also how the students have been able to benefit. You know, from uh, their exposure to copyright and to intellectual property in the classroom. So, please let me welcome Mrs. Stuart Ellison uh, from the Calabar High School. All right, good evening, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Goff. Um, good evening to all the other presenters and everyone else that is joining us. Um, even though I'm a teacher, I'm not a a public speaker, so <laughs> bear with me as I go through my presentation. Um, just trying to bring it up. I hope I, I, I'm not seeing that option that you told me would be there. Share your screen. At the yes. top, inside the microphone, there's a camera icon, and then there's a Share your screen. Um, and it says open Chrome Web Store or cancel. Yeah, and if you cancel it, what happens? Nothing. Yeah. If, you, if you could just send me a presentation in an email. Sorry, Goffy, could you take control, sir? Sure, sure. Yes, um, sometimes the technology challenges come at certain times. I, so I don't know why this camera is not working either. The screen has just left us, you know. But um, sure, so uh, 
just to say a bit more again then in terms of what certainly our JIPO's objectives in this area, you know, we appreciate the recognition that copyright and IP in general, you know, can um, play in terms of its impetus to young persons to be able to want to be more creative, you know, to create new products, create new designs, new inventions, and so forth. And certainly, in terms of the work that JIPA does, we are focused um, on empowering persons to be able to maximize their creativity okay, through being able to have the legal protection for their creative outputs. And also, of course, through being able to commercialize and translate that creativity into some economic benefit. Um, and you know, we often say that it is the young among us who have the 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 the, the um, cutting edge in terms of technology, oftentimes. And so we have to be very uh, calculated, you know, in how we approach the education of our young people, particularly if we are, you know, to be molding them in to being more creative, inventive persons. So that's why we really want to uh, have more of these forums. And that's why we really appreciate persons who are in the classroom making a difference in terms of imparting and sharing and inspiring uh, the young persons in terms of their creative talents. Um, so when we have our presenters who are working in these fields in the schools, what we want to do is just to share experiences because many times persons may feel like, oh, I don't understand copyright, I don't understand IP rights, it's hard for me to then inspire a young person. And yes, some aspects are more detailed than some, right? but what the challenge is oftentimes is how to then break it down into a manageable um, or manageable components you know, that the students can understand and learn at the same time, you know, being creative and making it fun and interactive right? um, so that they can appreciate it as they develop in their creative endeavors. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, of course, JIP is doing this as a part of our consultative process to deepen our national intellectual property strategy, right? which uh, requires or recommends that intellectual property be infused in the curriculum so as to, again, raise the profile of the creative uh, inventive, innovative output of the country as a whole. Um, persons would know that Jamaica recently did very well in the Global Innovation Index. And so the potential is there for us as a nation to be able to, you know, be one of the leading patent generating countries, perhaps, of the region, you know, inventions and innovative aspects. So the more we can get that message across and give the tools to our young persons in that regard, have the ability to contribute to national growth for the future. Um, all right, so I see Mrs. Stuart Ellison is getting ready, loading the, the slides. So I want to say welcome again, Mrs. Stuart Ellison. Um, and thank yes, you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you again. I'm sorry for the delay. All right. So um, again, as I was saying before, I, even though I am a teacher, I'm not a public speaker. However, let me do my best today. So teaching IP in digital media and animation. Now, to be honest, before teaching digital media and animation, um, I was aware of um, copyright. I, I was aware of the fact that um, persons could be charged for infringement. But since teaching the subjects, I have learned a lot more um, about what it really entails. And that has helped me in, in so many different ways. All right. So I, I'll try to explain to you today what are some of the things that we are required to teach in both digital media and animation and game design. And also the methods, the four very easy methods that I've been using for the past couple of years in order to teach um, this particular topic in these two subject areas. Next slide, please. 
All right, so just a little background on animation and game design. So it, both of them are secondary school subjects and they are taught at both the grade 12 and 13. Level. Now, the first teaching of digital media was done in 2014. That's the year for the exam. And I was a part of that cohort that started that first year. Also for animation, we started the first teaching was in 2015. And again, I was a teacher in that first year. Now, for digital media, we focus on, on mainly engaging students in creating digital products so as to bridge the gap between the Caribbean and the rest of the world. Now, the products that we mainly focus on teaching the students are app design, so like mobile applications, um, animations, even though we have a separate subject that focuses on animation, there's still a little bit of animation that is done in digital media. We also teach them about um, website designing. We teach them about um, creating digital audio, digital videos, digital photographs, ebooks, and digital art. So if you realize there is a lot of creative work that goes into um, all of these digital products that are created. So our, our main aim is that when they create these particular products, they will be able to make products that are fitted for the Caribbean itself, not only Jamaica, but the Caribbean on a wider scale. Because we realize that there's a lot of times when we are able to find products or, or even apps, you can go on the app store and you will find a lot of apps that are created for, for example, for the US. And there's nothing in Jamaica, we want those same services, but we are not able to get those apps um, readily available for Jamaica or even the Caribbean. And then for animation and game design, again, we hope to develop students who will be able to create both animations and games that are Caribbean based. So again, um, every day we watch our TV, we look on the internet, and most of these items that we see are mostly um, overseas based. There's nothing that we can look at as a people and say, yes, that is, re that is reflecting um, my culture. Um, so that is what the animation and game design syllabus aims to do. But again, along with the practical, there's also theory stuff that comes behind it. Intellectual property because they are considered creatives because they have to come up with all of these ideas on their own. Next slide, please. Now, for digital media, um, we focus for intellectual property, we focus on patents and copyright protection and how they can use these to protect, protect their the product, the digital products that they will make. And we also look at the copyright laws and ethical standards of digital content creation. Because when you create a, a mobile app or a website, they also have to create content to go on these um, platforms. So they have to also know how is it that the, the content doesn't always have to be original, but at the same time, they have to know how to present it in a way to make it known that it is not full. It's not their work, but it's still something that they are presenting on their mobile app or their website. All right. And for next slide, for animation and game design, again, intellectual property, um, what we focus on is teaching them what are some of the reasons for and importance of intellectual property, patents, and copyright. We also focus on what is intellectual property, um, patent, and copyright. What are the penalties for infringement on, on all three again? What is the process that they can use in order to copyright or patent their work that they have created? And also, how do they get um, authorized use of copyrighted material? And also, even though it's not mentioned here, what I also always include in my teaching of intellectual property is trademark because whenever they make products, especially like for their apps and so on, I always encourage them to, to create a logo. Don't just say I'm making an app and, and there's no branding with it. So create a logo so that it's, it's something that will represent you and the brand and the product that you're making. So I always teach them about trademark as well, included in the copyright and, um, and 
patent protection. Next slide, please. All right, so with um with teaching intellectual property um in in my class it's 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 normally fairly easy because one of the main things is that the students are always interested in how is it that when they create that awesome app or that website or they create that that um audio how is it that they can protect that in order so that they will always have use of it even after finishing high school because they have to create that product for their school-based assessment and that is normally sent off to the examination body which is CSEC and they are they are always thinking to themselves when I send this off to CXC am I still going to be able to use it do I have ownership for it does CXC have ownership for it so they always want to know how is it that they can um protect the the creations that they have made because I can tell you that sometimes they come up with some super ideas things that have never been done before and sometimes it's it's difficult when they when they say to me miss if i if i do this how will i protect it so that CXC can't say it's theirs and then they want to change their mind and do something else because um the jury is still out on whether the student will own that product or CXC owns that product so sometimes it's um a little difficult for them to use their best ideas especially when it comes on to coming up with an an app it's always hard for them to use their best ideas because they want ownership of it. They want um, a few years down the line, they are able to use it. I've had a student, several students who have created applications, have them know, even know on, on the app store and earning from it. And it's an SBA, it's a product that he started as an SBA in school and he just decided to develop it after he left school because it was such a good idea. Also, another reason why this is um, a very easy subject to teach is that the information is easily available, is readily available on the JAPA website. Um, on the JAPA website, I know everybody has been on it. All the information is laid out there for, um, there, it's not, you don't have to search, everything is there. So it's very easy to find the information that is needed for, for, the, the, info, for the specific areas that we need to focus on. Next slide. Now, the four main methods that I normally use, and, and even though it's number three, but the first one, when I just started teaching um, digital media and animation, Jaipo at their office, I think it's in New Kingston, they normally would have a yearly um, session, seminar at their office. I would normally take my students there and I, I really appreciated this because students were able to ask a variety of questions because they always want to know things like um, when they create an app, is it protected and they protect it in Jamaica, is it protected in other, other countries and so on, or how is it that they can get it protected in other countries. So when they go to the JIPO seminars, it would provide a wider variety of information for them. They would get to speak directly with the experts who will be able to provide more specific information to them about how is it that they can protect all the, the products that they are making. Also, um, we would normally invite a JIPO representative to our school. And again, this is another good initiative because Again, an expert is coming to tell them how is it that when you create that app or when you create that website, how can you protect that and use it in the future to gain from it? So we always invite a JIPO um, representative to come to our school and, and speak to the students. Now, with COVID and, and other situations, we haven't done that in about two, two years. So I, I think we need to look at revisiting that even in the virtual sense so that our students will be better able to engage representatives from JIPO and, and get more answers. Um, another method is that because the, all information is provided on the JIPO website, I will just give the students an array of questions like, how long does copyright last? What are some of the things that you can that can be copyrighted? How do what's the process of copywriting your items? And then send them on the JAPO website and they can find all the information there and then I have them present it um, to me and to their other classmates. Also, sometimes um, I would just go ahead 
pull down the information to answer those specific questions and just present that to the students um, for them to gain the knowledge. Now, with using all of these methods, one of the main things we normally do is to get specific products and to, to find out from the students which intellectual property is best suited to, to protect that particular item because they have to be able, they, they have to know um, what products they can protect and what um, intellectual property protection is there for that particular product. So um, it is, it is a, um, a good initiative, I think, that Mr. Goffey is doing now with, with trying to assist the schools and trying to assist teachers in finding out this information because I think a lot of persons are still not aware of, of infringement, especially when it comes down to copyright. Because even in teaching this, this, this topic to my students, I always have to remind them whenever you are giving me work and you are getting information from somewhere else, you need to tell me where you got that information from. You cannot present it as if it is your own. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for um, inviting me. And I think that's the end of my presentation for today. Short and to the point. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is Stuart Edelson. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I got the video back working now. Right, thank you very much for that, ma'am. Um, good insight uh, from your personal experience. And um, we really appreciate, you know, the detail with which you shared in terms of the different approaches that you use. You know, um, of course, we, we, we love the the big up of JIPO and I mean, JIPO continues to try to support the schools in that respect so that, you know, teachers who are teaching in their schools, who have their classes and they wish to have some IP contact with JIPO. As Mrs. Stuart-Elson said before, <clears throat> the COVID, we would normally take several schools um, and give them an office tour, give them an IP uh, seminar. Um, and essentially, you know, expose them in that way to, to IP. So, of course, COVID has changed that. We've now moved to an online platform, of course, but we still are open to doing, you know, one-on-one -on -one sessions for particular classes or schools who would like us to do that. And so if you are here um, and you are interested in getting a kind of a um, presentation from JIPO, please just email us and we'll be glad to, to engage you in that regard. So thanks very much again, Mr. Ellison. Um, and there'll be some, I know we will have some questions which will arise from from several things that you raised, right? Notably the issue of the ownership of creations, right, by the students. But um, we lead that to the Q and A uh, after our next um, two speakers. All right, so we're going to go on to our third speaker for the afternoon, um, who is Miss Janique Nesbeth. Uh, Ms. Nesbeth is an educator from the Chalamont High School, where she's the head of the visual arts department. Uh, she teaches also animation and game design, digital media and art and design. Uh, Ms. Nesbeth was one of eight persons in a CXC focus group who had recommended that IP rights form a part of the content for the art and design students as a part of that CXC program. Ms. Nesbeth also serves as a member of the Animation Industry Working Group of Jamaica. She's the founder of the Reanimate Group, which includes Reanimate Jamaica for Teens, Reanimate Virtual Campus, Reanimate Junior, and Reanimate Studio. Uh, and she is always in her lesson delivery information, uh, keen to ensure the inclusion of intellectual property rights and protection in her course content. So very pleased to have with us uh, to share her own experiences and insights, uh, Ms. Janique Nesbeth from the Chalamont High School. Good afternoon, Ms. Nesbeth. Uh, Ms. Nesbeth, will you, you seem to be on mute. Um, so I'm not sure if you're, okay, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. Um, pleasant afternoon, everyone. I hope you can see my screen. Um, are you seeing my screen, Dr. Goff? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, awesome. I just want to join the other panelists in um, just thanking um, Jaipo for the opportunity to present today. Um, just want to acknowledge you, Mr. Moderator, Dr. Marcus Goff, um, Mrs. Vivian Johnson. Really, I really enjoyed their presentation, and I also appreciated Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Stuart Ellison's presentation. Um, it was very informative. Okay, so we're looking at the topic of infusing intellectual property into the curriculum. And when I thought of this topic, I like right away I thought about my my fifties. Thought about my favorite fruit infused tea. Um for me, and for me, infusion means, you know, just a complete immersion. And the question I asked myself was, how can we effectively immerse intellectual property in into the secondary school curriculum? The aim being to impact learning outcomes. And for me, the main, you know, main outcome that I would like to see happening is students being able to apply intellectual property um, rights in their everyday lives. For this to happen, um, you know, the infusion at the secondary level, teachers will have to be educated about intellectual, intellectual property rights and protection from possible infringements. Teachers write lesson plans. They also write books and develop resources for their students. Um, if they're to, I think that if teachers are to be on board at one hundred percent, then um, they need to be guided in how to protect their own intellectual property. Because from the perspective of this person, you can only sell something that you have a personal experience with, and so if teachers are you know brought into this world and exposed to intellectual property and how to protect their own intellectual property then i think they will be better able to guide students to do the same when i was speaking to teachers at my school i was speaking to a number of other hods i was speaking to the principal and the vps the words that I kept hearing, you know, everybody wanted to be able to own their intellectual property. Um, they wanted to know how to monetize their creations. And uh, I think that this should be included um, as part of the curriculum at all levels. Um, there's currently some training being done through WIPO's Academy Portfolio of Education Training and Skills Development Program. And it's a program where school teachers are allowed to participate in lectures on intellectual property. They're given an opportunity to develop lesson plans and, you know, just to get to test them. And I think we would benefit from something like that. Um, and you know, just speaking speaking to some of my colleagues, they were so surprised to hear about intellectual property. It is something that they speak to the students about. Of course, I know the two previous um, the previous presenters spoke about um, just how teachers have to speak to students about uh, protecting their work and also not plagiarizing other people's work. So it's done in what we call, um, as part of what we call the hidden curriculum, right? So students, it is enforced and students are required to produce original work, but it would be so much more beautiful if it was a part of mainstream education. 
So why infuse intellectual property at the secondary level? The problem, there's a problem that needs to be solved. Like in my mind, I see this all the time. You go, you walk on the streets and you see people selling DVDs. Um, they're selling knockoffs, you know, instead of you, instead of um, the slipper having a mark, uh, filler, it has pillow on it and so on. And so there, there's this culture in Jamaica where we, we have um, we have bought into this culture of downloading things illegally and uh, distributing them, profiting from illegal downloads of, of you know material and just intellectual property, um, like other people's intellectual property. And so this is the problem that needs to be addressed. And the best way to do this is through education at the school level. The Jamaica Constabulary Force partners with JIPO every year, but this is not sufficient. I see sometimes in the town, you will see the police officers chasing these guys that sell the DVDs, but that's not sufficient because they can't do it every single day. There are other brands that need to be protected as well. Very popular brands. Um, you know, we, we are famous for our rum, our jerk, and our coffee. These and the new brands must be protected. I really believe that children must be educated to own their creative expressions and be respectful of the IP rights of others. Um, it was Miss, Miss Johnson who said, she was speaking about how talented our Jamaican um, children are. I have students in my class who will, you know, they have their own YouTube channels. Some of them are in this meeting right now. They have their own YouTube channels. They have created logos. Some of them will tell me they will share um, an image with me and say, may someone ask me to create this logo for them? What do I do? Our students are creating content and they have to, they have to be educated on how to protect these ideas. And of course, as everyone, everyone agrees that they need to be respectful of the IP rights of others. All right, so the solution, um, I just want to say thanks to Jaipo for coming up with this solution. The solution is infusing IP education in the curriculum at a secondary level. All right, I just, I'm so glad for this um, group of people that are present. I just want to acknowledge Mr. Kevin Jackson as well. He's from the Jamaica Animation Nation Network. There's so many other persons who in their classes, in their up daily operations, they do, um, you know, they, they, they apply uh, IP rights protection and all of these things. And um, these persons just need, I don't know, well, the good thing is that we're all here and we're all going to be joining with JIPO to help to protect the brands, which help to express our culture. For me, in order, to, in order for this infusion to be effective, uh, we need to look at the similarities within uh, the national standards curriculum and just JIPO's mandate and core values and everything. And for me, just going through everything, I've gone through some social studies, visual arts, science, national standards curriculum, and there's one common th thread that I see running through all of these documents. And one, um, the standards encourage creative Expression. So students are encouraged to express themselves creatively and also our culture is promoted. Jaipur is about this business, this business of, you know, protecting our expressions. And so I think that this partnership, you know, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be really good. All right, so if anyone knows me, they'll know that I love Jaipo. 
And I won't go as far back to the time when I was in ponytails or, you know, when I visited the Jaipur office first. I'll just start with um, myself as a teacher and just meeting them again after so many years. The Jaipur family are at the, um, at the Jaipur family, people are at the heart of their operations and I see that. Uh, they are involved with seminars, not just for teachers, but farmers and business people and artists, and it's really commendable. The Jaipur family listens to their clients and uh, the clients become engrafted into their family. And the good thing with Jaipur is that they're generous. Right, so they're gonna share information with you. There are some, there are some other entities that you have to, you have to know this person or that person in order to get um, information for your class, um, for your students, or just for your personal life. But the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, their aim is to reach people where they are, and I just want to say thanks for that. So I just wanna quickly look at our story there's a there's this beautiful story in august 2017 you know i was just thinking about what i wanted to achieve for the year i was tired of being in the classroom teaching students writing on the board you know i was like i need to i need to open up i need to redefine what the classroom is and so in 2017 a group of us left country, went to Kingston, and I said to the students, guys, we're going on an adventure. So we showed up at this particular university for an event, and a JIPA representative was present. We won't call the name of this person. So JIPA representative was present, and I was like, oh my gosh, finally, again, you know, and so the event at the university was canceled. And Jaipur representative said, okay, let us take you guys over to Jaipur. And talking about generosity, immediately the students were, you know, they were being taught. It happened so fast. Manager was set up and everything, explaining IP rights of the students. And let us look at the impact of this impromptu, this seemingly impromptu seminar. It's not impromptu because the person was ready, you know, for it. But let's look at the impact. So since then, uh, we have celebrated IP week at the school in the department. Let me say in the department mainly. We have an IP focus in our club. So in our department, in that's a visual art department, we have about three clubs, that's Digital Media, Animation, and Visual Art Club. And so there's an IP focus. So during IP week, before IP week, the students are involved in writing songs and so on. And they have to go around to the grade nines and share this information with them. You know, that's how we recruit people for digital media. There's also a digital media conference every year. Uh, we also share information. We also share information from webinars. So, Jaipo, especially since the pandemic, they have had. I don't know. They have had several webinars last year. I can't even count. And so, I attend. I've attended most of these webinars along with my students. And of course, I write reports based on you know the information that I've gotten. And these are shared with my colleagues in research skills and language and law as well. All right, we'll also share links for JIPO's YouTube channel and website, and the students utilize uh, these channels during their presentations for class. All right, from that very first meeting at JIPO and uh, you know, subsequent seminars where JAPA representative came to the school and so on. Let us look at the impact. So I'll just highlight two students, Casual Clark, Maurice Waugh. So both of them are currently 
at the tertiary level, Maurice Waugh is a final year student at VTDI. He's an animation student and Casual Clark is at the University of Technology where he's a media student. All right, hold on, let me go back to that. All right, so both of the, these two students, they are currently working as interns at a school and they have helped to set up clubs. So Casual has started a photography club. Maurice is helping with an animation club for the students. And you'll see a little bit later, um, just some images from that. So at the Charlemagne High School, intellectual property is in, well, it, it, it is already a part of some of the, some of the subjects that are offered at a school. So of course, as Mrs. Stuart Elliston mentioned, there are um, strands of intellectual property within animation and game design within the digital media. But it's also taught at grade nine through what is called research skills. And it's also taught by law teacher at the sixth form level. It's taught at visual arts, it's, it's taught in visual arts, but it's not written in the syllabus, all right? At other schools, at other schools, uh, intellectual property, there's some, there's some, some of it, some of, some intellectual property being taught uh, by teachers of EDPM and also at the primary level, students are required to properly cite sources and in and evaluate their credibility. So there's some kind of reference intellectual property, but it's not direct. Okay, so I don't need to go over this because Mrs. Stuart Elliston, she did a really good job, you know, explaining the different um, ways that intellectual property is expressed in the syllabus. All right, so we look at intellectual property, rights infringement, ethical issues, and so on. Same thing for digital media. And uh, of course, as I mentioned previously, intellectual property, it's introduced to the students, you know, when they have visual access, but it's not written in the syllabus. So it's part of what we call the hidden curriculum because once the moderators from CXC come in, the first thing they check for is plagiarism, right? They want, they're checking all the images, all the paintings to make sure that the students didn't copy anything from the internet and so on. All the journals are checked. And I assume it's a, the same thing applies for other subjects as well. Possibilities for infusion of IP in other subjects. So speaking to the vice principal um, in charge of academics, Mr. Valdin Legistor at my school, he suggested that wherever students are required to do research and where IP is created by students, that within a syllabus, the different um, syllabi, that these, like just before you require them to do research, just before you require them to create something, write a story or something that you could just insert you know, intellectual property and rights infringement and so on, just like, just right before that. All right, let's look at uh, where IP is created. So at our school, students of music, theater arts or drama, language, building technology, home economics, visual art, they have to create intellectual property in different forms, talking about written works, designs, and so on. All right, here are a few examples of how I think, and come, it, all of this is coming out of the discussion with the other HODs, VPs, and the principal. Because when I spoke to them about this webinar, and when I spoke to them about this webinar, they become so excited. They became so excited, and you know, they started to say that they wanted it even you know, as a part of the school's policy and so on. 
So out of the conversations with the other teachers, they're saying that copyrights and related rights can be infused in the subject areas that are seen on the screen, theater arts, music, literature, communication studies. There's even a module um, in communication studies, module one, that looks at gathering and processing information. So the HOD for that department suggested that intellectual property and rights management, it could be inserted somewhere in this module. Okay, traditional knowledge and cultural expressions. So going through, going through different syllabi and curricula, I found that home economics, there is some kind of focus. There is, in the home economics department, they have the 4-H club and in 4-H club, they actually have to look at indigenous plants and things that can be made from them. So I think that part of their syllabus could address traditional knowledge and cultural expressions. Social studies as well. Social studies looks at cultural expressions, culture being the way of life of a people. And I just really think that social studies is a really good subject to, um, you know, to have information on how to protect traditional knowledge and cultural expressions, you know, to have that inserted. <clears throat> okay, Mrs. Stuart Elliston, she also spoke about digital media and how students create designs, uh, logos, and so on. So these are examples of students' work. Some of these students are in this meeting right now. I had to put their work in the presentation. Um, so in terms of design protection, the students who do digital media and graphic design, industrial arts, visual arts, animation, and game design, they would benefit greatly from knowing how to protect their designs. Okay. okay, patents are used to create inventions, to protect inventions. And I find that in the industrial arts department and the visual art department, students, they have to come up with a lot of original work. And here's an example, uh, Miss Green, Miss Sandra Green, she's currently in this webinar. She's part, she's, you know, she's here. Uh, her students, her grade eight students, they, you know, created some toys. Here are the examples. And so we were looking at how students could learn how to patent their work, patent their inventions. Um, here is a rocking toy. This looks like a rabbit, and this is a rooster. So, you know, here, here again is another possibility for um, infusing intellectual property in the visual arts syllabus, right in this unit that looks at product development. Okay, at our school, we also offer agricultural science, Students have to look at indigenous plants and also agro-processing. Geographic indicators are used to protect, protect um, they're used to protect just these um, products that are made from our indigenous plants. You saw the examples above with the Jamaica, Jamaica jerk, the Jamaica rum and the Jamaica coffee. Jamaican coffee, all right? So I really think like after speaking to the agriculture, the head of agriculture, I really think that this section of I, um, intellectual property protection, it could be inserted in their syllabus, all right? This is also another example where agricultural science um, subjects, in these subjects, um, the teachers could look at new plant varieties. Well, they do look at new plant varieties, 
um, how to use tissue culture to come up with, you know, variations in plants. And so, of course, they would benefit from knowing about how to protect new plant varieties that they have come up with. All right, here we have a student in the building technology section of the industrial arts department. He just completed his work, work for his SBA. He had to build, he had to build this room and render the wall and everything. And students who do building technology, welding, technical drawing, they have to come up with novel products. For example, this tool that is right here, they have to come up with novel products. And so information on how to go about applying for protection for their industrial designs, you know, it could be inserted in that section of their syllabus. Okay, I'm almost out of wind, but for me, IP protection is something personal. And I'm a past student of the Charlemont High School. And thankfully, the administration, they're taking seriously, you know, our brand. We're a new school, relatively new school compared to, you know, the more traditional high schools. And so we are, you know, we're about to take steps to protect our brands, our emblem being the eagle. Uh, our brand is being exposed everywhere by former um, past students such as Asafa Powell, Garth Gale. He is principal for the school. Um, Mr. Graham, he is the assistant commissioner of police, Daniel Mayhew and others. And so we, we not just like, at our school, we are looking into exposing students to intellectual property in other ways. And that is by doing what you preach, right? And so we too, we have to take steps to protect our intellectual property. The students, you can see them here, they are, you know, this is the mentor band, they write original music and this is played to the mental music, you know, I mean, the possibilities are endless. The administration realizes the importance of protecting our brand. And this is the acting principal, Ms. Jennifer Giddon. We spoke recently about just what it means to own your intellectual property. And she immediately, after our conversation, she immediately put her team together to develop an IP policy for students. And, uh, you know, she spoke to relevant persons to ensure that it becomes a part of a charter of rights for students. IP awareness activities will be integrated in the school's calendar. So currently, um, celebrations are done within our department and we include the teachers of law and research skills, but, Having spoken to the administration, you know, it's going to be integrated in the school's calendar going forward. On a final note, I'm just going to share with you just one strategy that I used to allow students to develop their intellectual property and expose them to the importance of protecting their intellectual property. And that is the use of online communities. So we have our students in class for, let me see, we have uh, our students for about six, se six sessions per week. This digital media is taught at Charlemont at grades 10 and 11, not at sixth form. And so that time is very limited. All right, and so we have, you know, we have put together some communities uh, for these students to just express themselves and also learn more about intellectual property and other issues related to animation and digital media. These are the group mentors, Mr. Garth Gale, Robert Reed, President, um, animation specialist at the OPM, 
Ronald Dunkley, Kevin Jackson, as I mentioned, he's in, in this meeting at this time. The, the legislature. There are others, but these are just a few of the mentors to the students in that group. Ronald Dunkley, in December 2020, he he conducted a virtual character designing workshop and his focus was on how students can protect their intellectual property. All right, Kevin Jackson, he's also in that group with the students and of course he provides exposure to creators of intellectual property. And, uh, you know, he, during his lectures at the university, he does that as well. So we're really grateful to have these persons being a part of these online communities with the students because they get to see how people in industry, how they handle themselves and how they go about protecting their work. All right, here are a few pieces done by the students. So these are some character designs done by students. And the We Animate group has students from grade seven to grade 13. All right, this was done as an assignment. So the students had gotten an assignment. Um, well, we are getting ready for IP week, which is coming up in April. And so students have to create a storyboard, which they're gonna, you know, they're gonna do an animated short for that. And so this is one um, storyboard that was submitted that, um, you know, it speaks to the importance of protecting your logos using trademarks. So it was started by Casual Clark, and both the We Digitize and the We Admit group have students from 11 parishes. All right, so it's an all island group. It includes students from the Charlemont High School. So all of my students are in that group, in addition to you know students from other schools. So the group mentors are Casual Clark and Colin McDonald. He's a Dean of Discipline at the school. And he's in that group as well. Here are, the word, here are pieces done by the students of that group. All right. All right. Just to run down a very short list of intellectual property created for the members of the We Animate group. All right, so we have created a content book activity booklets for students, content books for teachers, lesson plans, and so on, that you know teachers can benefit from. And I just think that, um, let me see, there's something to be said about an organization that, you know, adapts to changing times. And I just want to say that Jamaica Intellectual Property is one such organization. Also the Ministry of Education, um, Ministry of Education is doing very well in adapting to the games, just ensuring that teachers have access to resources and training in how to teach in virtual learning environments. So I just want to thank um, the representatives from the ministry, Mrs. Stuart Elliston, um, Dr. Goff, and Ms. English for being here. Thank you very much. This is the end of the presentation. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Nesbeth. That was really, really impressive, really uh, insightful and um, dynamic, you know. Um, you raised several important areas, you know, uh, one of them being, of course, IP piracy, which is a very important reason as well why we need to infuse IP in the curriculum, for sure, you know, so that is very important, as you highlighted. And I want to big up all of your students, you know, who you highlighted their, their works, you know, really good work you see going on there, and um, to your staff as well, and your administrators. We're glad to see that the IP policy and IP inspiration, you know, um, 
has been taken on board in that way. So really want to thank you again for that uh, very detailed presentation, Ms. Nesbitt. Uh, we, you know, it took a lot of work to put it together, and um, and we're going to have some questions. So before we go to the q and I want to introduce our, our final speaker, who is Ms. Chantal English, who is an attorney at law and is the copyright and related rights manager at the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office. Ms. English is herself a creative, and since joining JIPO, has been very instrumental in helping us to spread the word of the importance of IP in the school system uh, and has been very um, instrumental in organizing as well our uh, intellectual property webinars um, in part of our public education mandate. So very pleased to also introduce finally Ms. Chantal English, who will share some insights as well from JIPA's perspective before we go to the q and if, if we could um, perhaps um, take off that share screen, please, Ms. Nesbeth, or is it Mr. Hope? Okay, I know I'll pass it to you, Miss English. Oh, was you were sure, Miss English? <laughs> All right, Miss English, the floor is yours. Thanks. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Goff, and thank you everyone for joining us today. And for the presenters, I must say that the presentation, they were excellent, excellent, excellent. So it seems as though today I'm going to be sharing with the the converts, persons who are already <laughs> converted. So I must say, um, Miss Nesbitt was an excellent presentation. Uh, Mrs. Stewart Ellison it was also excellent. I really thoroughly enjoyed the presentations that were made earlier. And just for for from Jaipur's um point of view, as was mentioned by Dr. Goff, just a few few things I'd like to share because majority of what was said I recognize was uh, was discussed. Okay. Also want to acknowledge our director, executive director, Ms. Bellamy, who is also online and giving all the thumbs up when we hear of the great work in which Jaipo has done and how appreciative the teachers are for the work. All right. So a little bit about Jaipo for those persons online who may not know that we are an agency of Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. And Jaipo was established in January 2001 by the Jamaica Intellectual Property Act of 2001. What are some of our responsibilities? You'd have heard some mention earlier about administering intellectual property laws in Jamaica, public education, which we're doing today, and registration of trademarks, designs, patents, GIs, and a voluntary deposit of copyright and related rights. And we have volunteer here because copyright protection is automatic. It arises upon the creation of our work once in a tangible format. So intellectual property, as was pointed out by most of our speakers, previous speakers, defines the creation of the mind. And we have the different IP areas listed here. Industrial property, which takes into consideration designs, patents, trademarks, and geographical indication. We have copyright and related rights, and also traditional knowledge. Now, why is it important to infuse intellectual property into the curriculum? And we heard from Mrs. Johnson earlier about the ministry's vision and the goal to ensure that we create a, a Jamaica where we have youth that are creative. And so some of the points was when, I, when I thought about it is to understand, for teachers and youth to understand the value of the creative industry and to respect the work of others. We also want to shape a nation that will have a greater appreciation for intellectual property. And by doing so, we are sure that we will have more creativity from more youth. Ms. English? Dr. Goff? Yes, I don't think the slides are sharing. I'm not sure if it's just oh, not able. No, oh. we're still on the first slide. So sorry about that. Oh. See, so had moved on. Yes, they're moving now. Yes. You are seeing them? Okay, my bad. Right. So I was at seven, right? So understand the value, as I mentioned, why it is important to infuse IP into the curriculum. So to understand the value of the creative industry, to respect the work of others, and to shape a nation with a greater appreciation for IP and for more creativity from more youth. All right. 
hopefully you're able to hear this um, audio on intellectual property and how we can get students to be excited to learn about IP. Because many persons there about IP, they think it's a very hard and complex area. But if it is that we can break it down for our students, as was reflected by the other presentations, I'm sure that we'll reach our target. You can indicate if you're hearing the, the video. No. You're not hearing? No, I think when you unmute, we hear a bit. When you unmute, we hear a bit. So maybe if you unmute and play it loud, it might work. Okay. All right, so the essence of the video was just to, sh to share how, as teachers, you can make it creative for your students to find different ways to show, to show to them that IP will eventually lead to getting revenues, revenue which many students, once they hear that they're, they're able to profit from their work, will be excited which we have seen shared, especially from Ms. Nesbitt's presentation earlier. So how can I, in, how can I address IP in my, in my lesson plan? So these are some of the questions I think some teachers may ask. Is IP relevant in all subject areas? IP is complex. Will the students understand? And so some, there are some of the subjects I've listed here. That's, when I thought about it, I see IP can be applied. And IP can be applied to almost everything because IP is everywhere around us from our devices that we're using now to the very chairs that we're sitting on if we look in our rooms wherever we are now ip is there and so it is important for us to teach our generation our young persons especially about this important how ip is important now there are different methods that can be utilized to incorporate ip different teaching learning methods so some of the methods that I identify is learning by doing learning in small groups, and learning from others. And so learning by doing will ensure that the students uh, get the responsibility or are assigned tasks to be able to, to do certain um, works, which I will go into. Learning in small groups, there are some persons who prefer to work in groups and they understand information better, while there are other persons who prefer when they're learning from others via a presentation, for example. All right, I'm going to look at some of the IP areas and how intellectual property can be infused from these areas. So look at copyright and copyright protects the following original work, literary, dramatic, musical, artistic work, sound recordings, films, cable programs, broadcasts, typographical arrangements of public edition, published editions, which is found in section 6.1 of the Copyright Act of Jamaica learning from others. So some examples, you can have a video presentation on copyright and related right as it relates to this area. You can include, have a quiz, and I heard that mentioned earlier. You can invite a guest speaker to your class to speak on this area as well. Students can conduct research. So this is learning by doing now. So students can conduct research on IP areas and identify how IP is related to the subject area. And there are lots of resources available, as was mentioned, I was commended um, earlier, that Jaipur website is the, one of the first place to go if you're looking for intellectual property information, especially as the local IP office. There's also the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, which has a lot of information readily available and accessible to all who want to use that information to enhance the growth or development of their students as it relates to intellectual property. Students can be encouraged to also create brochures on the importance of IP. They can also create video on intellectual property. As I heard mentioned, uh, students write poems and, and songs. Again, that is excellent. And that was uh, another idea that I had that would be instrumental in infusing IP into the curriculum. Some of the Important things I also thought that for each teacher, they need to be abreast or to be aware of the different principles as it relates to each of the IP area. So just to remind us, 
copyright protection is automatic. There is no formal registration system, but then there's a voluntary copyright registration, which is a deposit that we have at JIPO. Again, all this information is on our website. Also need to know the rights of the copyright owner, which is in section nine of the Copyright Act. The term of protection, I also heard that mentioned earlier about students um, being quizzed on the copyright um, term and extent terms also would be is also important to note the exceptions to the use of copyrighted material. So these are some pointers that teachers are encouraged to, to note. And similar to all the other areas, uh, trademark, again, is important. When I thought about trademark, I thought about it's been incorporated in art and craft, physical education, entrepreneurship, information technology, right? And some of the activities can have a discussion with students on trademark and the importance of brand and what society would be like without brands, without nothing, any, any symbol or any mark on each product or goods. You can encourage students to create a logo, prepare points on the importance of brands. And again, this video uh, link that I have, it's from the WIPO website number of links as it relates to IP for children. And for designs, I thought about art and craft and clothing and textile, which would also be applicable, um, applicable area for infusing IP. I have some designs here and I saw some earlier, which was done um, in presentation. So just to reiterate that Intellectual property can be infused in almost every, I would say that we can be infused in every subject area that we can think about. All right, let's quickly look at patent. Patent is an exclusive right granted by the state for an invention. And we think about patent, we, prior to, ago, many of our parents, there was no computer. And so someone had to come up with that great idea to have a computer, to make a computer. And to date, we can benefit from, we are benefiting from using the, these devices. Now we're in the season where we have COVID and we have a number of vaccines coming out. Again, we realize the importance of IP. And since we understand this importance of IP, it's also important for us to pass it on to our future generation so they too can understand and appreciate IP, what IP is. Uh, so other subject areas that it can be infused in, mathematics, physics, econ, chemistry, and information technology. Uh, again, presentations can be shared to the students on patent, preparing quiz based on the presentation. Competitions can be had, uh, can be an individual or can be a group. All right, so some of the websites or some of some of the websites that intellectual property material is available, uh, the JIPO website, there is the WIPO website, the Koran website, KIPO, and also the UKIP office, which has a myriad of videos. I would encourage everyone, teachers online especially, to check out the UKIP office um, website. There are a myriad of videos that would assist as well in the learning, teaching learning process of intellectual property. I think I will stop there and just to reiterate that JIPO is on ball with this project of working with the schools, with doing everything that we can within our remit to ensure that the young generation garner the important information that they need to get from intellectual property. We realize that Without intellectual property, pretty much there will be nothing because intellectual property is really all about creation. And so we urge those who are online to who have not yet visited our JIPO website to visit our website and also to share with other members of the, the teaching, um, teaching staff within your school as well as persons who you know will benefit from IP because intellectual property is an asset. And because of the asset that intellectual property is, we at JIPO believe that working with our schools, 
creating this environment and atmosphere where individuals appreciate and understand intellectual property will enhance our nation and will also foster growth and development in Jamaica. I think I'll stop there, Dr. Goff. Okay, thank you very much, um, Ms. English. Thank you very much for that um, and for the efficient use of time. Um, we appreciate it. Uh, and thanks to all our presenters too. A very rich discussion, I think, today so far. And um, now we're going to open up to the, the audience, to open the floor for questions and comments. Um, we had a lot of information being shared this afternoon. So please, the floor is now open if you have any questions or comments um, to any of our presenters, please do so now. You can either type them, I believe you can type them, yes, uh, in the uh, chat. Uh, and you can uh, let us know if there are any comments or questions you would like to ask. Um, I see a question by Ms. Bellamy. Um, I will ask them about a timeline. I was, let's see. Okay, is there a proposed timeline for inclusion in the curriculum? Right, good question. Um, Mrs. Johnson, are you there with us still? We'd love to hear you. Yes, Ms. Johnson. Um, Ms. Bellamy is asking, is there a timeline you could share in terms of the inclusion of IP in the curriculum at this point in time? Uh. Good afternoon, Ms. Bellamy. Not at this moment, not at this moment. Um, I'm, I'm advised by the core curriculum division that already um, there are areas of infusion in the curriculum, but I have to explore this more with them. Um, okay. But I was, uh, I was informed. I'm so sorry, I missed everything. Can you repeat, please? I don't know what happened. Oh, um, I was saying that I will have to follow up more with the core curriculum division in terms of where the where the where it is in infused into the curriculum because I was advised that it is infused into the curriculum. Probably not as fully as we want to to see it, but I will um I will find out from, from Dr. Flowers exactly where that is. Yes. Thanks so much, I appreciate that. Cause it's been a long time that we've been trying to get that infusion into the curriculum. So this would be a good time now to start pushing and encouraging, especially since most of our instruction now is online. It's really important and critical. Okay. Yes. Good, um, good. The, the last time Mrs. Berry, when she had presented in part one, had shared a kind of process, you know, I don't think she gave a timeline, but it's sort of the process she said that it had to go through to get officially infused in the curriculum. So, um yes there seemed to be some distance to go although as you said it's already in several components right but in terms of across the curriculum from 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 primary up she said that there would be some steps to take in the future um, okay i see another question in has been posted by mr Dunkley. Uh, have we begun the process of updating the schools about the madrid protocol and flexibility we now have to register Sorry, have we been on the process of updating the schools about the Madrid Protocol and the flexibility we now have to register copyright, IP, etc.? Right. So in terms of that one, Mr. Dunkley, uh, the Madrid Protocol, as persons may know, will facilitate the international registration of trademarks uh, through one process through JIPO. So we are well advanced in that um, stage in terms of of the legal framework being developed and that will soon be in place, which will facilitate easier registration overseas of trademarks, right? Uh, copyright will not be a part of the Magic Protocol, um, but certainly when we are closer to accession and implementation, there will certainly be a public awareness campaign that will be launched to make the 
public aware of the protocol and its benefits and procedures, etc. Okay, um, so I would perhaps like to ask a question to uh, Mrs. Stewart, if I might. Stuart Ellison. So, Mr. Ellison, you were sharing about the experiences you've had, you know, since 2013, teaching uh, at Calabar game design, animation, etc., and how you utilize the IP uh, in terms of imparting to the students that important component. Uh, in particular, you mentioned that there had been issues raised in terms of the ownership of the of the creations by the students in the context of work done for CXC. Could you share some bit, some more about that issue, um, how it has been raised and maybe what has been the uh, result so far of that discussion? I know you said that it has been raised, but where has it reached now? If you could share with us, please. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we're here now. Okay. Um, well, the last time over the years, the students have been have been um, questioning whether or not their products that they create is owned by them or by six. Because as I said, there are several students who have um, made improvements on their products and they have placed it, especially for apps, they have placed it on the app store. Um, the last conversation I was made aware of is that it is something that is still being looked into. So the students still don't have full ownership of it. So what I normally encourage students to do is that um, if they decide to develop the product after they leave high school, change the name, um, add some other features to it, um, especially for the for an app. Um, for, for an animation, it's a little bit more difficult because Normally, when you're creating an animation, it's just the information. It's already put in whatever animation you're creating. So to improve it, it's going to be a little bit difficult. But the jury is still out. The last I heard, the jury is still out on whether or not um, CXC is taking full ownership or the students um, has ownership for it. We, we also normally encourage that they that they go through the process one, one year. In fact, I encourage my students to go through the process of um, copywriting their product, but then um, I was advised that we should not do that because, again, CXC is having a problem with it. So there's nothing final. I have not heard anything final as yet as to what's happening with it. Okay, okay, thanks. Uh, it sounds to me that there possibly could be some um, role that the ministry could play there, you know, CXC being a regional organization. So hopefully there are some discussions that are happening or that at least that have been raised by the teachers or schools concerned, you know, that there could be some sort of um, resolution or clarity that would be important, you know, I think for the students to know and for everyone to really be clear. Um, I would also ask Ms. Nesbeth, um, Ms. Nesbeth, you mentioned of course, quite a bit as it relates to the involvement of the students and the extent to which they had incorporated different aspects of IP. I'm hearing for feedback there. Oh, okay. okay. Right. So, what would you say um, has been the extent of the impact on the students who have left through or passed through that program? You mentioned some who have gone on. Have any of them been able or been interested, inspired to further their creative endeavors they learned through school in terms of any um, professional or career paths thereafter? Thanks for, that, thanks for that question, Dr. Goff. Okay, so I mentioned two students who have completed the program. Uh, these two students, they benefited from seminars held by JIPO. 
And since leaving high school, they have pursued, you know, studies in media and animation. Now, let me tell you, um, I think I want to answer the question in another way. Um, the minute our students here, the minute they're um, exposed to intellectual property rights and how to protect their intellectual property, immediately copyright symbols start appearing everywhere. Miss, how can I, you know, copyright this story that I wrote and so on. Um, so it even, the, as I said to you before, um, the minute, the, 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 as soon as they're exposed to um, this topic, they, it, it, it affects how they do everything. And so, no, Miss, I cannot share my work just like that. I have to give you permission first. No, I have to copyright it first. Miss, how do I go about, you know, actually paying for um, copyright and trademark protection and so on? And so out of discussions with the students, the question has come up about costing and how can young creators afford, you know, pr protection for their intellectual property? Uh, I think someone from the class had raised a point about maybe some kind of uh, subsidy or something, because if you think about it, a high school student who has a YouTube channel and they have a following of, you know, five or 10,000 people, how can, how can they protect their work that they're putting out there? How can they afford that? So that's a question that can be looked at as well, because as I said to you, once they're exposed to um, intellectual property and, you know, related information, they are interested in doing that. And they do um, make use of the poor man's copyright. Um, I think that's what it's called, where you, you know, mail the work to yourself. They, so they will mail their stories, um, use a registration mail mailing process and mail their work to themselves and so on. But I think a number of them want to access, you know, the mainstream methods or the, the um, they want to access the services of JIPO, but they're unable to do so. And I don't know how that can, how that can be fixed because so many students in my class are entrepreneurs. They have their own businesses, they do designs for businesses and so on, but you know, they have no protection for their work. Yes. yes. Um, I understand that perspective. Um, so basically there will be some, there will be a need or there will certainly be some benefit to the student population if there was some assistance in terms of the registration or protection of some of these rights. Um, okay, I think that's a very good point. That's a very good point, I think. Um, some some incentives you know, or some kind of um, assistance, as I say. I think that's a very good point. Um, let me bring in Miss English. So, Miss English, you were also sharing some of the uh, different you know, techniques or approaches that can be used, what are the tools that teachers can seek to try out in the classroom context, right? To basically assist with infusing IP uh, to their students and in the curriculum. Um, what do you think, Ms. English, in terms of the secondary schools, right? Could be um, the kind of approach that could both be within the curriculum, right, as well as providing some sort of incentive uh, to, to, to create. And I want to perhaps ask you particularly to talk about the JIPO as a competition and what lessons we may have learned from that. Thank, thank you, Dr. Goff, and thank you for bringing up the essay competition because I most certainly would have brought that up as well, that last year we had for IP week an essay competition on the topic, why are intellectual property rights important to small islands developing states in the 21st century? And we had a number of applications 
from both the from the primary to the tertiary category and we awarded our winners with trophies um winner for two we also gave each person a certificate signed by the director and the deputy director sealed with diaper C. so many persons expressed how much they learned from the essay competition and if it is that you check our website, you'll also see videos of the students who were placed in the top three um, position where they expressed how much they learned from IP. And many persons from the participating in the competition have now have a greater appreciation of IP. And we also will deposit the work of the winners for the first, um, second and third category. So I believe that competitions Young people love competition. They like to know that they're going to get a prize. They're going to get um, some award or some monetary incentive. This year, we will also be launching another uh, competition, IP competition. And so uh, we you please uh, stay tuned to our pages, our social media pages, as well as our website, because we'll be launching the another essay competition on IP Day at April 26. So we hope that many of your students will uh, take the opportunity and join the competition. Students like to be recognized. And so if it is that you can have an, an award ceremony at your school, well, we're no virtual, sorry, <laughs> but we could have some way of recognizing. So a virtual award ceremony could be had, uh, recognizing students who have made, you know, excellent um, contribution as it relates to Say, for example, they've created a, a wonderful art piece and from an art competition. So it doesn't have to just be an essay competition. You can think about an uh, art competition. You can think about essay competition. We could think about a science competition for um, inventions or patents. So a number of things, a uh, number of um, ideas, I believe, and students will appreciate having that reward from the different um, competitions that can be had. Also, want to... I think it was Mrs. Nesbitt, or Miss Nesbitt, uh, who spoke last. And just want to let you also know that at JIPO, once it is that you reach out to us as it relates to the students and wanting to deposit your work, because I, you made mention of the poor man's copyright. Earlier, I mentioned that at JIPO, we have a voluntary um, copyright registration service where we deposit the work. So we could deposit the work of the students and we could guide you through the entire process in terms of how to go so to, to do it step by step and we'll be happy to do so. So once you can re reach directly to, to me or Miss Wright, I think she's online to, and we could put her email in the chat and any students who want assistance with this um, registration or deposit will be happy to guide the process. But I believe that students like to be recognized and want it is that their work is showcased and they are getting some kind of incentives such as trophies um, cash prize, if the school can budget can go um, to that that level, then certainly. But as I expressed to Dr. Goff um, earlier, that when I was in school, one of the most important thing for me is getting a trophy. So I didn't have a problem with not getting a cash prize. So a trophy for me was 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 good. And I think many of the young people they they are still excited to get trophy or some kind of recognition to know that they have done well. Thank you very much for saying this. Thank you very much. Yes, um, I think certain competitions can be very useful. You know, as I say, students like to be competitive. They want to win. You know, they want to be recognized. And so I think those are some very good strategies too, which can be used. And not necessarily going to be cash prizes, as you say, but something that just affords them the chance to do well and to be recognized for their efforts. You know. All right. So we're wrapping up now. It's after five. Um, the floor is still open. Are there any final questions for any of our panelists? Uh, please feel to ask them now. Um, as it is quarter past five, according to my uh, clock. So uh, again, we did start a bit late. But if there are no further questions, um, I am going to just uh, take this opportunity as the moderator to thank you for again tuning in to this another in our series, um, looking at infusing intellectual property in the curriculum, right? Um, you'll see Mr. Hope is launching a poll. So please take the time before you leave to 
to complete the poll. Uh, I want to thank our presenters for sure. Mrs. Vivian Johnson from the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, um, responsible for policy development in the ministry, uh, who without reservation, you know, has committed, of course, the ministry to completion of the infusion process of IP in the curriculum. We're very pleased to be working with the ministry in that regard. Look forward to the benefits of, of that. We also want to thank um, Mrs. Michelle Stewart Elliston from the Calabar High School for sharing her experiences too, uh, in terms of her years working in the classroom, working with students, um, exposing them to different projects and aspects of copyright and intellectual property. Um, and again, you know, we want to thank you, Mrs. Stewart Elliston, for you know being yourself one of those persons who inspires and continues to inspire young persons in terms of their creative endeavors is very important. So we thank you for taking the time out to be with us and to share your experiences also this evening. I'd like to thank Miss Nesbeth, Janik Nesbeth from the Charlemont High School. Ms. Nesbeth, of course, also shared um, her wealth of information and knowledge in terms of the different ways that she herself uses IP in the classroom, as well as uh, how IP can be infused across the curriculum, including the hidden curriculum. Right, and um, a very thorough presentation. I want to thank you, Miss Nesbeth. I think a lot of food for thought in terms of broadly how different areas of the curriculum can have IP infused. Um, look forward to continuing to work with you in that regard. And of course, uh, Miss Chantal English, our copyright manager at JIPO, uh, for sharing her own insights, for sharing about JIPO's perspectives on this issue, and also some of what we try to do to contribute to this infusion process. I'd like to thank Ms. Bellamy, our executive director, and the JIPO team that produced this webinar. Um, thank Ms. Young and Ms. Wright for the help behind the scenes. And I want to thank you, the audience, for staying with us till this time of evening on a Wednesday. Um, so thanks again to the team. I hope you had some time to complete the poll. Was the poll launched, Mr. Pope? I hope so. Completed, sir. Okay, all right. So then, unless there's anything else, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Please stay tuned. We will be having the third in the series on this uh, topic in May. Um, and so we will, of course, be looking at that time at the primary school um, aspects in terms of how we can break down the IP content, you know, to even a, a younger cohort of students who you know, we also want to be able to inspire through IP as well. So please join us uh, in May, date to be confirmed, when we'll be looking at that aspect from the primary school perspective. And we'll once again be having that discussion and hoping that you could join us for that. All right, thanks very much and enjoy your evening.